uh, with uh, partners in change uh, partners in change is is also a founding member of this alliance and uh, he will be taking us through on how do we go about it and then we also have a website where we have sections on uh, membership uh, we encourage everybody to become members and 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 plan uh, uh, jointly and uh, not just events but also activities uh, as dr balara was saying we need to do sustained activities uh, events like these are very very important where we ex exchange knowledge but kind of uh, joining each other with the different skill sets that we have and that is also important when when we start working with parent teachers and children and young people over to you dheeraj uh, thanks uh, ajay uh, hope i am audible yes 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 yeah, great uh, thanks ajay uh, for inviting me and uh, i think my job is uh, made easy by professor balhara he has already in a way summarized the kind of uh, discussion that happened over the two days and it was uh, full of insights and uh, also it was uh, like uh, the kind of diversity we had in terms of uh, different spaces and the range of experts who came with their work and the domains where they have their own uh, interest and expertise which is uh, very good for this uh, forum in a way and uh, just to uh, look at some of the interventions if we looked at uh, we looked at uh, scope for trainings and how those have been done there were there was a discussion around tools that have been developed um, there was also a discussion about uh, influencing curriculums which is a, a very critical aspect uh, then looking at policy response not only from business side also from the state uh, and uh, we had representatives both from uh, state as well as the business uh, talking about the kind of uh, interventions they are making and how they look at uh, this work then they we also had interventions which are tech based and uh, uh, yesterday tushar had spoken about how ai in itself has scope for uh, how uh, ai community itself can take certain actions and uh, today we also saw from pfi that how uh, snai ai app it, chatbot in itself is uh, uh, bot is in itself a, a solution an empowering solution so then there is research uh, both from practitioners as well as from uh, academic space and we have seen doctors psychologists intervening in this space so it was full of diversity and now uh, building on these two days of discussion uh, i feel that we can open this floor uh, for uh, uh, attendees here and uh, if we can uh, think more about how to achieve such, some of these things if we are looking for uh, very concrete engagement and uh, some of these uh, suggestions from uh, professor balhara about having some kind of continuity also in terms of uh, interaction and not only in terms of one of the programs uh, happening uh, here and there and also what we uh, as experts in this platform can offer uh, in terms of expertise or areas of uh, uh, collaboration that we think about if uh, uh, some of us can please uh, talk about those i open the floor and we can freely talk about some of our suggestions uh, for we forward any anybody can now now it is free uh, for discussion so anybody can unmute oneself uh, on 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 his or her own and speak Oh, yeah. Prina, would you like to say something, please? You can go ahead. Okay, I think that this becomes a huge challenge that you have, uh, like it's, uh, we have diverse uh, points of intervention in a way, I think the way uh, this forum has come about and the kind of discussion we had. So uh, maybe in terms of very small steps also that we feel that, uh, uh, could be taken up uh, in coming year and uh, uh, where uh, many of the members or uh, attendees at this forum can also contribute uh, would be good to have uh, even observations on some of the presentations of it.
Could yes, I ask? Um, yes, I'm ready. Firstly, congratulations to Sika and everybody who delivered the sessions. It was very informative, very well thought of. And uh, the, the, the session plan was such a lovely one with, that it had a balance between industry, practitioners, NGO, uh, and researchers. And, uh, you know, it was so nice to hear. My, my question and an observation uh, goes to Tejinder's experiment with the Sika AI, uh, Sneha AI app and the bot. What, what it appears to me at the moment, that it's got a good collection of frequently asked questions, but delivered in a nice manner, which is very interactive. And it's not just a big list, but, but it comes, uh, it tailor makes the answers to the question. But, but I'm sure with, with the millions of uh, questions and the interactions which the bot has had, there must have been victims who have come forward, but they were just, you know, truncated in their interaction uh, with uh, with the with the question answer session. But are you looking at something where it can be interact? Uh, whether some data can be collected and interaction uh, or referral can be made to Childline or the respective DCPOs or DCPUs that uh, victim support can happen and uh, you know we getting the abuser is one thing but getting some sort of support to the victims would be great thanks yeah thank you so much uh, for that yes so your observation is uh, completely uh, i mean it's correct that so th the first step that we've sort of taken is to inform users and uh, young people on on what uh, abuse or what their well-being means so so that they're able to identify those instances of them uh, and like i said uh, we do not sort of read into chats or get any personal information so even if there have been uh, instances where they may have reported uh, abuse or any other kind of exploitation uh, so there are helplines that are provided there as a recourse to them so so they can reach out to those helplines um, but yes, uh, we do not sort of step into uh, trying to solve those issues for them. So we connect them to the right authority uh, or, or support available um, through the bot itself without any sort of human intervention or uh, reaching out. So we do not even, uh, we wouldn't even know if we want to sort of reach out to someone, we wouldn't know whether Tejvinder from this city with this number or contact is reporting a case whether for themselves or for their friends or, or anybody else also so the idea really is to connect the user to the help available so that they can uh, i mean the right people can handle the case and, and not really a bot or at our level where may, may not be the completely right people to be able to handle those cases okay thank you thank you so can can they dial in from the bot itself to, for example, child line? Yeah, yeah those numbers are already there. Uh, so if they're on the bot, yes, yes, they can, uh, depending on the permissions that they've given to the to their Facebook or to the bot, uh, the messenger platform. So there is a separate reporting section where if they are abused or if they need some help, uh, not only will a list come, but they can also dial in from the bot itself. So there is a helpline section directly. I mean, and it's part of the main menu. So it's not really, of course, it's down deep in, inside also, but it's there on the main menu as well. So if they need help and they can uh, get to that section quickly. Yeah, thanks. And thanks. The websites, uh, website also has those numbers. So they can look at those numbers and dial in from a different mobile if they want. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, uh, if I may, with your permission. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, um, there has been a lot of uh, inputs from all angles regarding the victimization of victims of children uh, of cyber crime and all the cyber related security matters. And just as Sir Amarendra had pointed out, uh, he was also more concerned about getting or seeking help for the children uh, through the board, which has been developed by Population Foundation of India. 
uh, what I was also concerned is that, uh, you know, there are also perpetrators or what we call children offenders who are below 18 years, who themselves knowingly or unknowingly get involved into such activities and they themselves become offenders and they have been charged under certain sections under IPC and IT Act and, and, and then they have been taken up under the procedures of the JJ Act also. So what I'm talking about is uh, the category of children whom we refer to as children in conflict with law. So, uh, you know, are there any uh, provisions within this helpline where children who could also be termed as, you know, uh, children in conflict with law or possible or potential, you know, uh, uh, offenders, uh, getting to know some of the information that if I carry on with this morphing or if I uh, do this kind of, uh, you know, cyber stalking, then perhaps these are the penalties that could be imposed on me or, or these are other things which are not permissible for me, like some kind of awareness for the children to keep them away from indulging into such kind of offenses. I'm talking about the offense part, not the victim part again. So uh, are there any areas where we can also deal with it within this chat? Yes, I mean, uh, yes and no, uh, I mean, both. So currently there isn't any uh, sort of such section where, where there is direct awareness or information available for offenders. Um, but, but yes, uh, the content in itself includes certain parts wherein it talks of, uh, when, when I say uh, safe online behavior, it only also means how, how do you be safe and uh, sensitive to other people? So you do not indulge in any harmful behavior, but uh, there is not a lot of information in terms of uh, how they could get in trouble or, or the law uh, that applies to them. Uh, so uh, a half no to that, but yes to uh, the part that there is a lot of scope to build content. I mean, the bot is very flexible in that manner. Uh, we can definitely include uh, other helplines that may be available. Uh, I mean, that's uh, really easily doable, uh, including other helplines where people could reach out for help. And uh, yes, we could also look at including more content uh, directly uh, for for uh, offenders also. So, so there is scope and uh, I'm sure there is scope to do a lot more, but yes, we can do that. and. Uh, including helplines is, uh, yes, definitely possible. Thank you, Mr. Teswinder. And Ajay, I think uh, this has been the right platform from where we can develop uh, from broader perspectives of children in need of care and protection and for the children in conflict with law also, because uh, since morning, I've been hearing about the victimization of the children. Uh, yeah, no doubt CCL who are into such cyber offenses, again, they could be counted as one of the category of CNCP because uh, as everybody has been discussing, it has been due to lack of parental care, or monitoring, or maybe uh, due to some uh, instances where we left the children on their own and they are there on their own and they got to get indulged into all these things. So certainly uh, there has been a lot of findings also. It's been really interesting, uh, but perhaps this area could also be included just as uh, Mr. Teswinder had pointed out. So certainly I think uh, we can take on from here also where we can put in some of the uh, you know, full stops or maybe some commas or some you know, hyphens so that children could stay away from indulging themselves into such kind of activities also. Thank you. And this has been a very good platform. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and I'll be most ha uh, happy to connect with you outside of this forum as well to see how we can build in more on Snehai. Thank you. Uh, may I? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. So I want to bring in another element altogether. So uh, we've realized over the last two days that it is very multidimensional and, and complex and too many things to be dealing with while we talk about online safety. But when we talk about reporting, uh, what we've done with an organization called Don't Offend India is also talk about how uh, children can, when children report child sexual abuse online, they can also provide help to the people who are perpetrators. And I think that perspective brings in a different hope 
uh, you know, for people with pedophilia, with, with hebephilia about uh, seeking healing, seeking any kind of closure, seeking any kind of treatment for the behavior that they are kind of experiencing. And, and uh, that element also built in a lot of hope for people who have been struggling. So they probably are not offenders, but they're on the fence you know and, and could become offenders at any given point in time but there is help available to them also and i think that element somewhere needs to be a little built upon so that we're also able to provide assistance help healing direction to people with different sexual orientations it's just a thought uh, because that is something that we've started working on since last year and we found that a lot of children reported so that we could reach out anonymously to people who are trying to exploit them uh, another point that I want to raise is uh, with Mr. Tejinder, I think uh, the, the app is brilliant and I think if we can have local organizations also be a part of it where we could, you know, uh, I, I agree with uh, Mahala altogether on having, building local support systems through the app where uh, we're also almost doing the same thing of providing legal and psychological support to victims of uh, online distress on the helpline. So if you're dealing with, Madhya Pra with Maharashtra and Goa, you could probably be the nodal organization to deal with cases that come to us here. And, and then there is closure faster. Probably there are interventions that can happen faster. And my third and last uh, uh, suggestion would be to create some kind of a mandate for parents. So because parents' liability is the highest what are the must do uh, things that parents should be equipped with in terms of information and age appropriate information because there there is so much to understand learn pick i think uh, probably with the age of children that they're uh, parents of maybe some kind of a, a module or content that needs to be specifically designed on these are the mandates so this is the mandatory information every parent must have uh, because digital literacy does not incorporate safety elements at all. It is only about understanding platforms. It has to be a very comprehensive approach about digital safety or digital literacy is uh, in inclusive of online safety norms. And then you are called a digitally literate uh, uh, person or an individual. And I think that mandate would also be good for schools to run these programs for parents on their own through the resources that they provide. But it's been amazing being a part of this two-day thing, and we're really looking forward to actively getting involved in the alliance. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sonali. And I think yes, it's uh, very important that uh, all all the all the actors, especially the experts who are on the intervention side on the solution side, they uh, remain connected and they they act in a connected manner. Like uh, and and hold each other's hands because that is very, very important when we are talking about solution for the children and the teachers and the parents because uh, it's it's a great experiment and it's a great tool, uh, Snehai, that is there. There are other tools also. Snehai is definitely one of the latest and the better ones. Uh, and the best part is that, uh, as Tejvinder has told, that they, they it, it is an evolving tool, meaning it is not something which is already there and it will all it will remain like that forever and ever, meaning it is an evolving tool. And uh, it was really good to know from him that uh, the Population Foundation of India is kind of ready to uh, kind of make certain changes, um, uh, add certain buttons. Uh, and yes, uh, for, for that matter, uh, alliance like this, uh, Shika can also be. And uh, because uh, once uh, we are formally as a members, then we, we have, uh, I'll, I'll share that uh, website, uh, how it is and what, what, what are the objectives and how it works. Uh, so it uh, the information clearing house and 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 that that is something which which we uh, as an alliance do and 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 this can be a great facilitating point also uh, the alliance can be I'll I'll share that screen just give me allow me to share it Can you see this? Can can everybody see this screen? 
Yes. Yeah. If you uh, go to home, I'll show you how it works. So there is join Shika. Alliance has two types of membership. One is associate membership and the other is general membership. So if you go to associate membership, then the members who contribute, this is, they, these are the ground rules and in this, this is how it, the Alliance benefits the organizations by re reducing time cost to retrieve information, reducing learning curves, improving knowledge sharing and distribution, enhancing coordination, standardization and synergies across organizational units, reducing net rework and reinvention as Sonali was saying, uh, enabling innovation and benchmarking against influencing sector standards as Amita was presenting. And we need to, as we move ahead, then we need to have benchmarks also. Um, uh, what, what are the sector standards? Because there are sec different sector standards coming from the technology side uh, on AI and ML and blockchain. There are diff different influencing sector standards uh, so far as law is concerned. Uh, similarly, for the for the field of psychology and psychiatry, we have so when when we act together, work together, we it is very important that we set because these these kind of benchmarking uh, will only come from working together and listening to each other and and drafting things uh, jointly and agreeing to a draft, and and this this these comes from uh, organizational experts. And since it is multi-sectoral, multi-dimensional, one organization which is only working on the law side or one organization which is only working on the technology side or one organization which is only working with the last mile connectivity will not be able to, but once we listen to each other, work with each other, then it becomes possible. And then once it is a jointly signed off document that we are creating or a standard that we are creating or a knowledge that we are creating or the, the then it, it re reduces rework and uh, reinvention. We build upon each other's strength and it gets uh, some sort of, uh, not some sort of a whole lot of um, credibility and acceptance also uh, from the government. And, and different industries. So that is that is how uh, it, it, it works. So uh, I, I uh, it kind of ask everybody to become, it, it, see if you click on become an associate member, it comes like this. So you just need to select associate name. If you select this, then email ID, mobile number, organization, the organization website and it also asks for, uh, because if it is an associate membership where we need to work together uh, on the solution side, not just seek help, then we also, there is a, this, uh, we had uh, asked for it. It, it. it asks for the certificate of the organization, some sort of like registration certificate or, because otherwise anybody can register, we will not be able to verify and the address. And if you look at the general, general membership is for generally for, teachers, parents, individuals, I'll go back to general membership, how it works. It is for those who are seeking help, not on the side of providing a solution. See, this is how it works because this, and general members are generally schools, colleges, universities, uh, departments, but if an institution, whole university or whole school wants to become member, the chairperson of the school or, or the principal of the school and the school board decides, then they have to take uh, associate membership. So I call upon everybody to um, uh, enroll here, become uh, members so that we can remain connected uh, for all, all through the years, meaning, uh, when we talk to each other, uh, we, we will definitely have ways of uh, jointly evolve ways of remaining connected with each other, each other on a monthly or a fortnightly basis uh, and, and write documents, agree to each other, agree to that, those points and, 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 and how, see how we can collaborate and work. And so it should not just be, as Dr. Balara was saying, uh, one off event or, uh, or a monthly event. There has to be a sequential planning to which we are doing. Uh, and, and it was hindered definitely by COVID because that kind of interaction and everybody was busy in various lot of things. Uh, 
kind of uh, firefighting on many, many sides, uh, on many issues at the personal front and the organizational front. But now is the time when we when we meet each other and and we 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 can also have. Uh, continuous maybe a monthly meeting sort of on virtual platform and 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 and, and uh, meetings at the physical front and and work on these things so over to you dheeraj uh, thanks ajay i think satya has uh, his hand raised would you like to add yeah hi dheeraj thank you so i have just two points i mean i'm here since yesterday and uh, i know satya, can you can if you can turn your video on Okay. Yeah. I hope I'm visible. Yes. So, yeah, I have two quick points, you know, and since yesterday, the, you know, whatever we have been heard, hearing the learnings, the practice, the initiative, you know, uh, this is incredible because, you know, we have been talking, this is a space which is very dynamic and we need to think as a collective. You know, two quick points which I want to make. One, uh, Ajay, what I strongly feel that uh, whatever the initiative, uh, and in fact, uh, this will also connect to what Mala Ji was sharing, that from child protection, we need to really move on to child safeguarding. You know, And when I use this word safeguarding, uh, because we are creating a lot of content information for the children to use it. You know? And let's say my kid who is on Facebook and get... Uh, you know, lured by somebody, you know, and uh, lately uh, he or she realized that I have been misused and or I've been abused, you know, and since I'm also heading child line, you know, so the experience also gets cluffed from there, that they are really not taking an initiative that they want to report, you know, because they are looking at the backlash, you know, how the family will respond, you know, they may allow them or they may not, uh, you know, allow them to use the internet or be on internet, you know, and this has also happened during COVID time when, you know, they were uh, asked to be online because of the school uh, classes, you know, and, and in between what was happening, they were really scared that, you know, what if, if the parents get to know, you know, they were scared that, you know, will not have access to mobile and internet. And this I'm precisely talking about the larger section, which are in the urban slum, in the rural communities, you know, uh, where parents, you know, forget about uh, these migrant populations, you know, whose parents are really not worried and, and ready to take this burden. You know, and that's where I strongly feel that uh, even the government of India, I remember uh, WCD, they initiated about creating a child protection uh, uh, protocols, you know, a policy, uh, which I don't know at what stage it is, but it never got executed. So maybe uh, as part of this uh, alliance, uh, Ajay, I strongly feel that we need to push it, uh, take it as an advocacy front. Uh, because even on th those, whatever the content is available, I don't see anything around online is available, you know. Uh, so that's a good space where we should uh, get into it. Uh, secondly, which is very important, because largely, as I said yesterday as well, that we are working on human trafficking, and I know how this human trafficking has gone into this online space, you know, making friendship over Facebook, WhatsApp, you know. In fact, last, two, last week, I had uh, two such cases, you know, where... Uh, we are currently working with the girl uh, is from Nepal and, and the perpetrator is from India, you know, and, and they just developed friendship over Facebook and she landed up in Himachal Pradesh. So when we initiate this kind of uh, practice, you know, it should not be integrated as part of compliance, you know, how do we see that, you know, it is more taken as uh, or beyond compliance mechanism, you know, you are feeling accountable and responsible to do it, you know, and Ajay, you know, since you are also working with the school, you know, so as we, what we realize that, you know, uh, when you initiate such kind of uh, activities, they just want to see as a tick mark, you know, that, okay, we have this, uh, uh, you know, a counselor in place, you know, which is more from a compliance perspective. So maybe when we are doing these activities, let's keep this in mind. Otherwise, all these hard work, you know, great initiative and, and our last uh, recipient, you know, which is the children in concern, you know, I would doubt that, you know, we'll have, a, you know, a greater impact. And this also connect to what Tusar was saying, you know, this space is changing, you know, very uh, rapidly. You know, how do we really equip them to take care of it? So, yeah, even the children, those who have experienced abuses, you know, they don't want to come back and report. You know, how do we really facilitate? 
you know and that is something because once i am reaching with my awareness program and i am not uh, giving them much space and opportunity to report the, the the level of confidence and trust which you have developed on the trainer you know or on the platform it's not easy that you know they will easily go and uh, ring 1098 so uh, with this i think we have a lot of uh, work to do as as a collective you know as a alliance and i strongly feel that you know, advocacy and and making government responsible uh, will be very important uh, thank you Thank you, Satya. I think Navdeep Singh was raising hand. Navdeep Singh, if you want to speak. Navdeep, G, you were raising hand. Okay, I think. It So over to you, Dheeraj. I think we can go ahead for winding. I think uh, we can just see if there are any uh, more contributions or inputs. And uh, so maybe Ajay, you can uh, uh, summarize and conclude. And also if you can, uh, in a way, uh, talk about some of the uh, key focus areas where uh, Shika is going to engage further uh, would be, I think, helpful for attendees at this platform and to see how they can also collaborate with that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and uh, before I conclude, uh, let me thank everybody. Uh, let me thank Dheeraj first and uh, Partners in Change, uh, because uh, this uh, Zoom uh, uh, meeting that we are having is on uh, PIC's platform, Partners in Change's platform, and that is how collaboration works. I, I thank uh, Dr. Balhara, uh, uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Uh, uh, thanks Satya Prakash, FXB Suraksha, uh, and thanks to Yogesh ji uh, from AFD Pratidhi, uh, all the founding uh, members of this alliance, and thank everybody who came and uh, presented and listened to each other. Thanks to all the speakers from Tushar, uh, to Dr. Dhawal Gupta, uh, to Shireen, to Mala. Thanks uh, to Anika. Thanks to Preeti ji. So to, thanks to whom we listened to today, Tejvinder. And all those who participated and, and listened to and spread the word forward. And, and, and in fact, it will help. It has helped and it will help later also because, uh, it, because uh, people have kind of entered into this online fatigue and people very rarely join on online events and, and join. And, and most many of, uh, many of us, including me, want to listen uh, to the conversation and important events uh, on YouTube after the event is over. So this, this conversation will be also seen and heard later and we'll be publishing uh, short videos out of this uh, for different sessions so that because different sessions are of interest for different people. Moving forward as Dheeraj uh, requested me, uh, we'll be having uh, uh, the another event in Delhi at India International Center in uh, Delhi, uh, where we will launching the books and having meeting at the auditorium. This was due from 2020. In fact, uh, the auditorium was booked for March in 2020 and uh, the COVID struck and we had to kind of postpone it. Now we'll have it then. We'll have uh, once we'll also send you emails on becoming uh, associate members uh, and those who become associate members uh, will have regular uh, meetings on, on, on and definitely what we work on want to work on is uh, becoming an uh, information clearing house and and sharing information with each other and joining hands uh, on 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 different researches and definitely uh, the benchmarking because uh, benchmarking is something which is very, very in, uh, important and every industry has a system and a process for its own benchmarking of its own uh, knowledge set and skill set. And, and this being uh, uh, from a very different and diverse uh, 
kind of uh, portfolios and uh, that we work on we also we, we also need to have uh, information and knowledge from law from technology from psychology from psychiatry uh, to to the educationists so we all need to work together in terms of what benchmarking are we creating because it, it is not very advisable to see that okay okay we did this thing and and, and it, it moved in a different direction may became a little counterproductive or did not yield that kind of a result which was envisaged so if we can have those things within our own communities so we'll be having these kind of conversations very regularly sending out notes and uh, seeking feedback on, on, on those notes and coming out with agreeable drafts on benchmarks and what, what should be done, what, what, what is the best way forward. So with this, uh, I thank you everybody and goodbye. And uh, Sonali uh, uh, has been uh, there and has, uh, has been running the organization uh, in Maharashtra and Goa and and she is very enthusiastic about kind of collaborating on the research front and on the work front. And, and I think uh, she has been a brand ambassador for, or for the theme, in fact, even before uh, we started work on this. So there are more people who could not join this conversation during these two days, but who have been part of it. And, and we, we will definitely uh, bump into each other, listen to each other, meet each other. With these words, I thank you all. Uh, and goodbye. Uh, we'll share uh, the links of the YouTube videos and please spread the word further and give us about a week for the reward and uh, separate videos and we'll share all those with you. Thank you so much. And, and all those who volunteer for uh, some sort of help uh, or, or some sort of uh, um, kind of uh, tasks that they want to take on themselves or their own organizations uh, for the uh, Alliances are also most welcome to write to on info at uh, shika.org. Info at shika.org. Please do or please write, uh, uh, connect with, with anybody, connect with uh, Dheeraj or Satya Prakash or, or me or Dr. Balhara and, and, and we will be very happy to accommodate and listen to everybody and talk together. Thank you so much.